That clip that you just heard, that was the Jazz Collective playing Grown Folks by Snarky Puppy. And we have one of the former members of the Jazz Collective. That performance was from 2019. He's now since graduated and moved on to the world of being a professional musician. We are very lucky to have Stephen Shapiro in, student, in studio with us today. Stephen, welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate Absolutely, it. man. I'm excited to hear some of the music uh, that you're about to make for us. Before we start, maybe you can tell us uh, a little bit about yourself, um, how old you are, maybe when you started playing music. Um, for sure. Like um, so my name is Stephen Shapiro. I am 19 years old. I have been born and raised in Miami my entire life. I've been playing music and in bands around Miami my entire life. I love it with Zach. Um, and I love doing a lot of classical stuff. I love making my own arrangements, not only for solo classical guitar, but also for bands, et cetera, you know, awesome. that kind of stuff. And you do, you do a lot of arranging work. Mm -hmm. um, you, you like to, just so everybody knows what that means, maybe some non-musicians out there, you like to basically take songs and then put your own stamp on them, right? Make, yeah. make the Steven Shapiro version of that song. Exactly. We're actually, um, you do a lot of work on social media too. What's your, yes. it's not Steven Shapiro's version of the song. What is your artist monocle, well, moniker and handle <laughs> on social media? I made it a while ago, but I go by the name Chaos Canine. Um, Chaos Canine like the dog, right? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So if you want to see, Steven makes these amazingly, like beautiful videos that also sound incredible because they've got his solo guitar arrangements in Thank them. You. Um, puts them on Instagram and YouTube, and they're a, a worldwide sensation. So <laughs> everybody go check out Chaos Canine on the socials. Um, all right, Steven, so you're going to be playing some stuff for us today. Yes. Um, we're very lucky for that. Why don't you tell us about the first song that you're going to be playing? Well, I learned this um, classical piece a while back. Um, it's called Natalia Valls Venezolano II um, by Antonio Laura, and it's just a beautiful piece. Okay, well, I can't wait to hear it. Take it away. Thank you. Steven, that was awesome. Um, say the name of that song one more time, just so that everybody can look it up if they want to hear that song. What was the name? It's called Natalia Valls Venezolano II by Antonio Laura. Antonio Laura. Beautiful. Really, really, really nice. Um, now, Steven, you play some classical. That was a classical piece, right? You play a lot of other types of music. How would you describe like your influences or the music that you're interested in? Is there anything that connects uh, those mm -hmm. genres? Yeah, so, um, I mean, 
since like a very very early age i've just been like fascinated by a lot of um movie scores and original soundtracks and especially video game themes because i'm a huge nerd um <laughs> and so a lot of that has a ton of classical elements to it yep. and so naturally i kind of gravitated towards classical guitar and so like my love for arranging like movie soundtracks and video game soundtracks all kind of connected awesome and the then you play you play some jazz music yes. as well mm -hmm. how how does that like for you how does that fold in or what's the difference in playing some jazz music versus this solo guitar heavily arranged uh, style that you often play in well there's definitely a huge difference with jazz um you're very free to kind of do whatever you want to do um and you get to improvise a lot and Normally, a lot of people say that classical guitar is the exact opposite of that. However, uh -huh. the way that I look at it, especially when I'm arranging, I take all of those like freeform um, improvisational like elements, and I just use that for my arranging. Right. So it's like you're improvising ahead of time, but then you're like crystallizing it and keeping it in your arrangement. Exactly. So you so still might like, use improvisation to come yeah. up with the it's music the best in the first of both place. Worlds, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I like that. Very nice. Um, are there any um, other guitar players who do solo guitar that have kind of really influenced the way you think about playing solo guitar? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, I mean, Antonio Laura, like the man who made that, and also there's that's just one part of like a three series that he has. There's Vals Venezolana one, two, and three. Okay. Um, so he has just been a huge inspiration. Mm -hmm. But also, um, Joe Pass, he's a He's a jazz guitarist, but he does his own um, chord melodies and arrangements, yeah, and like yeah. it's insane. Those it's beautiful. are beautiful. It's no secret to anybody who knows me. Joe passes. I mean, Joe passes. The reason I started playing the guitar and playing playing jazz, uh, and you know, uh, one of the biggest reasons I fell in love uh, with jazz music. That's yeah, that's some special stuff. Um, and you were in the the jazz collective. Yeah. Um, which was a YM, is a YMU program. We have a current member of the Jazz Collective, actually, who will be performing soon. Um, but you were a member uh, for one year, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Your senior year in high school? Yes. Awesome. Um, and the Jazz Collective, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, is uh, an amazing jazz ensemble here at Young Musicians Unite. I have the honor uh, of coaching that ensemble. And the idea is taking what, uh, at least what in our opinion, uh, amounts to the six most talented jazz musician students from throughout the city and putting them together in a group where they'll play with each other until they graduate. Um, and it's been a really special thing for me to see all of you guys and what you've gone on to do. Um, if you look at the list of alums from the Jazz Collective in particular, you know, Kyle Tennyson and Nicholas Gillen and yourself and um, Marcelo Cox and um, uh, Christian. Christian Acevedo. There we go. I knew I was forgetting somebody. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and Christian, uh, seeing, seeing all of you guys and what you're doing is amazing. Like yeah. that's, been, that's been really cool. I'm curious from your perspective, what was it like playing in the Jazz Collective? Uh, um, I mean, what stuck out to you? Um, what stuck out to you about the other people that you were playing with? What you learned from them? What yeah. kind of experiences did we have? So, I mean, just being in the Jazz Collective, being surrounded by musicians that are better than yourself is just, like, one of the great mm -hmm. motivators to want to practice and want to get better. Yeah. Um, and you just, like, create, like, really amazing friendships, especially within the band, because you all are working on the same type of music. You all are constantly motivating one another to get better. And so that was just huge. But my... Personally, my favorite aspect of that whole experience was just playing all around Miami constantly. You know, we play at the Adrian Art Center, we played at Pam, um, and you just you get those experiences which you can't get elsewhere. So yeah, I think that would be if I were to say one of the unique things that the Young Musicians Unite program does, um, especially our after-school ensembles. It's we're not taking the approach of let's just play some music. It's let's play some music as a band and approach this as a professional ensemble and play real gigs Absolutely. and do real recordings and, and truly have that experience. And I think, at least for me, 
that's what I would have wanted uh, when I was that age. It's just like as much as I can get my hands on as far as real tangible experiences yeah. in the music world. Absolutely. Were there any gigs in particular that stuck out to you about your time in the Jazz Collective or any venues that were especially cool for you personally to play? Or? I mean, definitely the Adrian Art Center because like that's like one of the staples of like Miami, especially in the art scene. Um, so just being able to play that like as an actual like professional band with like the yeah. other members of the Jazz Collective, I mean, that's huge. Not, I mean, a lot of people older than the Jazz Collective at that time, they don't get the chance to play it so that the fact that we were able to do it was super cool awesome man well i think it's time for another song yes uh why don't you tell us you were telling us a little bit before about your love for film scoring music and video game music and etc and i happen to know what's coming next so i know that that relates tell tell me about what we're about to to play and how this solo guitar arrangement kind of came about give us the backstory yeah so um on my main instagram page and youtube um i do mainly um, but not exclusively a ton of video game themes and movie themes and just like a lot of pop culture kind of stuff because I, I think that there's such amazing music integrated into like pop culture. And so one of my favorite things to arrange is from the Zelda soundtrack because I personally think like it beautifully encompasses like a ton of the aesthetic and just everything you can't have the zelda games without the zelda soundtrack so i mean it just makes it what it is and so the piece that i'm about to play is called great fairy fountain it's from zelda and so yeah all right let's hear it man take it away definitely was awesome man thank you thank you um here pull that mic up uh real close to your yeah yeah there you go perfect 
Um, yeah, okay, that was awesome. Thank you for that. Um, so I want to I want to ask you, uh, as a as a student from Young Musicians Unite, as a musician who's now um, a young adult, what would you say to other students who are starting in the Young Musicians Unite program? What kind of um, advice would you give them? If maybe you're thinking about if you had to give yourself some advice when you were younger and starting out um, as a musician, maybe only a year or two into your journey. Hmm. That's definitely a very insightful question. Um, I think the best advice that I would give myself is to just make sure to do what like, you're actually enjoying and practice what you're actually enjoying. And I feel like a lot of musicians, especially at a very younger age, they get kind of lost. And one of the main reasons why they don't practice, one of the main reasons why they're not motivated is because they're not actually interested mm. in the kind of music that they're playing, especially in the public school system. I mean, that has its own thing. But one of the great things that I loved about YMU is that I love jazz and I love playing in a band. So that really motivated me. And so what I would tell to those kids is to just be in a program that you legitimately enjoy. And I know that's the case in all the YMU bands, so yeah. Yeah, awesome. And then what if, I'm putting you on the spot today. This okay. is, sorry, this no is what worries. it's all about over here. Oh. Uh, what would you say to somebody who's considering donating right now, who's on the live stream watching this wonderful performance um, and saying, hmm, maybe I will give to a program that supports students like Steven Shapiro? Absolutely. So um, I've been with YMU for quite some time, around a couple of years now. And um, I've not only played in the Jazz Collective, but I've also had the great pleasure of having the opportunity to mentor kids at yeah. schools. Um, and the public school music relationship and music education is a very poor one, honestly. And one of the things that I absolutely love about YMU is they give that opportunity to those kids who would not have the opportunity otherwise. And yeah. And I want to clarify something, too. I mean, I think, like, uh, everybody in the public school system is doing their best. But the problem is sometimes, like, uh, you know, it takes a village to make those types of things happen. And so having mentors uh, like yourself, uh, you know, students who have graduated now and are a few years into the world, come back and work with those students uh, inside of the public school system is something really special. So I also want to thank you for what you've been doing to oh, mentor our students. My pleasure. Work yeah. behind the scenes and et cetera. We yeah. really appreciate it. YMU just like completely makes the public school education for music a, a lot better. So that's what I would have to say to anyone who is considering donating, which you absolutely should. 